Hi, I'm Movie Hanger, and this is the movie Fall. Two girls are trying to survive on a TV tower stuck at a height of 610 meters. The film begins high up in the mountains. Three climbers ascend a sheer wall. Becky, her husband Dan, and her friend Hunter. The ascent goes smoothly, but not for long. While trying to secure a wedge, Dan startles a proud mountain bird, which in turn startles him. In surprise, Dan falls, but the safety rope holds him. However, he is just short of reaching the rock and securing himself. He asks his wife to detach the safety line so that the rope is long enough. She obediently does so. Dan almost grabs onto the rock when the wedge fails, and he slips, causing the man to fly away without even promising to return. A year passes. Becky is still mourning her deceased husband. She ignores phone calls from her father and drowns her sorrows in a bar, only taking a break to listen to the remaining voicemails from her late husband. As she leaves, her father, resembling John Winchester, confronts her. He promises to punish his daughter if she doesn't pull herself together and stop drowning her sorrows. However, Becky pays no heed to his words. She goes home, where she prepares to consume a pack of pills for global tranquility. A call from Hunter interrupts her overdose. Her friend is already at the door. Hunter talks about her extreme travel blog. At her father's request, Hunter suggests that Becky climb the B-67 TV tower, 610 meters high, to scatter Dan's ashes from the top. In the morning, Becky decides to accept her friend's offer. Together, they head to the desert to the tower, which is soon to be demolished. On the way, they reminisce, watching videos on the phone and ignoring calls from Becky's father. They stop at a roadside motel not far from their destination. From the diner window, they can see a red beacon at the top of the spire, intended for airplanes. Since smartphone charging in the cafe is paid, Hunter teaches Becky a life hack to insert the plug into the lamp socket. In the morning, after a short night's nightmare, the friends drive to the tower. Hunter records entries for her blog on the way, but since she is shooting a video while driving, she narrowly avoids getting hit by a truck as they leave the motel parking lot. Soon, the girls arrive at the fenced-off area. The entrance to which is closed. They leave the car behind and continue on foot. On the way, they encounter a flock of vultures feasting on the carcass of some poor animal. After recording a video for the blog, the friends shoo away the scavengers, not forgetting to take a selfie and post it on social media. Reaching the base of the tower, Becky experiences a wave of fear. Since her husband's death, she hasn't been involved in rock climbing. Her friend encourages her, and together they climb the rusty stairs upward, paying no attention to the questionable technical condition of of the structure. The ascent takes a considerable amount of time, even pausing to have a drink of water. Overcoming the framework, the girls reach the spire where the antennas are mounted. Becky struggles to step onto the open platform, but she pushes through and continues climbing. Once at the antennas, they have to bypass them. One of the fastening bolts comes loose and falls down, but Hunter pays no attention, climbing to the highest platform where the spire with the aviation beacon is located. She helps Becky climb up after her. At this moment, a second bolt comes loose and falls. Unaware of this, the girls revel in the euphoria of conquering another summit. They record videos with a quadcopter and take selfies. For the sake of good shots, Hunter even hangs on one hand on the edge of the platform. To help Becky overcome her fears, her friend makes her hang on one hand as well. After taking a photo, Becky scatters her husband's ashes from the height. Then, they prepare to descend, but as soon as Becky starts descending the stairs, which now missing two bolts, falls apart. The girl falls along with the metal structure, but the safety ropes and Hunter's nimble fingers allow her to hang suspended at half a kilometer height. Hunter pulls her friend onto the platform, although not on the first attempt. Up there, they realize the interesting predicament they find themselves in. The height is enormous, the ladder has collapsed, there's no signal, and the backpack with water and the quadcopter has fallen down and lies on the antenna. Upon inspection, they notice a shelter with a signal flare gun and binoculars. Hunter observes that Becky has a wound on her leg and proceeds to bandage it. She reassures her friend, claiming that her followers, concerned about the disappearance of their idol have already called the police since she mentioned her destination in the videos. The girls settle in comfortably and patiently wait. Meanwhile, shooting new videos, checking their posts, Hunter notices fresh likes from followers. She assumes that she received them while climbing the ladder, meaning their signal slightly lower. Tying the phone to a rope, she lowers it down to send a distress signal. Not hearing the signal transmission, Hunter herself descends the last ladder steps and hangs on one hand. 
Failing to catch the signal, Hunter climbs back up. The girls decide to drop the phone down, tucking it into a shoe and padding it with underwear to prevent it from breaking upon impact. As they throw the device down, Becky notices a tattoo 143 on Hunter's ankle. Meanwhile, Hunter in binoculars spots a man with a dog wandering below, but doesn't notice the sneakers with the phone or hear their screams. Becky tries to attract his attention by throwing the shoes, but it doesn't yield any result. Seeing the footwear, he tosses it aside. Becky wants to shoot the flare gun, but Hunter stops her. They need to wait for the right moment when the man notices the signal. Through the binoculars, Hunter sees a van. A friend awaits the man there. As it gets dark, the girls decide to launch the signal flare. It doesn't work on the first try, but on the second attempt, a handsome rocket soars upward, grabbing the attention of the men. Hunter signals with the flashlight on her phone, after which, the van rolls towards the fenced area near the TV tower. Spotting the girl's car, the men decide to steal it. Forced to spend the night on the tower, the girls talk. Becky notices that her husband Dan used a numeric code as a declaration of love. 143 means, I love you. It was their little Da Vinci code. It's strange that Hunter has a similar tattoo, and the friend honestly confesses that before Becky married Dan, they had a romance. They work through their feelings until dawn, as if there were no other problems. Remembering that besides water, there is also a quadcopter in the backpack, which can be used to send a message down. The girls think about how to retrieve it. Hunter tries to hook the backpack with a safety rope, but the length is insufficient. Then, she decides to descend to the antenna herself, having secured herself with a safety harness. Even so, the length is not enough, and the girl has to swing and jump onto the antenna. After picking up the backpack, the first thing she does is drink water. Then she considers how to climb back up. The rope is too high to reach. Using a selfie stick, Hunter attaches the backpack to the rope, then jumps jumps and grabs it, hanging in the air. While Hunter crawls along the rope, Becky pulls the rope up. Once Hunter reaches the ladder, she slips and falls down, but manages to grab the backpack hanging below. Since her friend hurt her hands during the fall, Becky has to pull her up completely. After retrieving the quadcopter from the backpack, they write a help note and send the device straight to the motel. However, the device's battery is depleted, and Becky returns it just in time, barely catching the powerless device as it approaches. The girls are forced to spend another night on the tower. Waking up in the middle of the night, Becky doesn't find her friend and panics, calling for her while shining the phone flashlight. In the darkness, she is frightened by a flying vulture, which almost knocks her down. When the bird settles, Becky sees the vulture pecking at Hunter's lifeless body. Waking up from the nightmare, Becky finds her friend nearby. In the light of the signal beacon for pilots, they recall how they charge the phone from the lamp socket in the motel. When dawn breaks, Becky, having finished the remaining water, crawls up the pole with the backpack. Despite her injured leg, she reaches the light bulb and unscrews it. Then, Becky inserts the charging plug into the socket, but it's much wider. To complete the circuit and establish contact, Contact, she removes the wedding ring, which she wore as an amulet around her neck after her husband's death. Using the ring, she manages to place the quadcopter on charge, but now she must hang on her hands long enough for the battery to charge. The blood from her wound attracts the attention of a local vulture. The persistent bird circles around, not hesitating to attack its prey. During one such attack, Becky drops the backpack, and it falls down, past Hunter, who doesn't even attempt to catch it. Enduring until the charge is complete, tearful Becky descends. Resting, the girls wait for the next morning when the hotel guests will start leaving. In the morning, Becky launches the quadcopter with the note towards the establishment, but on its approach, a passing truck knocks it down. She watches through binoculars as the driver stops to see the cause of the collision. However, upon seeing the broken drone, he just gets back into the car and drives away without inspecting it. The quadcopter with the note remains lying on the roadside, almost invisible. Storm clouds gather above them, both literally and figuratively, as a thunderstorm approaches. Becky suggests trying once again to drop the phone down, placing it in shoes and padding it with clothes. However, when Hunter refuses to share her only remaining shoe, it's not due to greed. She's already dead. Slipping during an attempt to retrieve the backpack, Hunter didn't catch it, but fell onto the antenna where she died. Vultures peck at her body, while Becky, unaware of the reality, continues to converse with the hallucination, unable to accept the bitter truth. Realizing that she is completely alone in this ordeal, Becky cries. She waits for the passing storm, losing all will to live, watching videos with her father on the phone. Becky records a farewell message to him, which he will see only when she's gone. In the morning, the weakened girl is joined by a vulture attracted by the smell of blood from her wound. The bird tries to taste her, but Becky displays true feminine cunning 
and catches the vulture. She sustains herself with the raw meat of the scavenger. At dawn, Becky ties a rope to the bottom step of the ladder and descends to the antenna, where another vulture is eating Hunter's body. Jumping onto the antenna, she scares away the audacious bird with a single confident look, then proceeds to execute her plan. Removing the lifeless cold shoe from Hunter's leg, Becky places the phone with the message to her father in it. But that's not all. She also inserts the shoe with the phone into Hunter's lifeless stomach. Among the remaining entrails, the device has a better chance of surviving. After finishing the preparation, Becky pushes her friend's body down. Becky huddles on the antenna, waiting for help here is not as comfortable as on the platform, which is now inaccessible, but it's still an option. However, the old tower thinks differently, and the antenna attachment begins to wobble under the weight. In the next scene, Becky's father, receiving the signal for help, drives straight to the tower. Emergency services and rescuers are already bustling around. The man steps outside and sees medics loading a body into a black bag. He almost cries, recalling his daughter, but she turns out to be alive. They manage to get her down, and she sits in the ambulance. Becky hugs her father, crying on his chest. The camera slowly rises like an unmanned quadcopter, leaving the girl below, who has once again felt the taste of life after almost losing it. And with that, the movie concludes. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Have a great day. Goodbye.